Welcome to this week's real estate market update. Hope you're having a great day, guys. This is my final market update for the year 2023. It's actually my market wrap for 2023, and I talk all about it in this week's blog article. You can check it out here at martinutzi.com. If you wanna have a read of that, make sure you jump on there, click the link uh, blog at the top, and you can check out all my weekly articles there as well. Before we get into it, guys, I just wanna wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I do hope you've got some downtime planned with your family, your friends, your loved ones, and I hope it's a safe one as well. I'll be working throughout the Christmas and New Year period, so if you have any property-related questions, needs, requirements, uh, please do give me a call, uh, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. This week, guys, I just wanna focus on what's happened throughout the year. Now, we did see at the start of the year, a lot of people concerned that there was gonna be a, a fairly big market crash, and we didn't see that actually happen. The property prices fell from the peak in uh, April last year, by about 7.5% and then quickly rebounded this year. We've actually seen a recent report saying that the combined capital city's property price growth has gone up 9.4% in the last 12 months and that's fairly significant. Regional areas are tracking slightly behind uh, the growth of those capital cities and the number one key player I believe uh, for that is the amount of migration coming into Australia over 500,000 in the last financial year. Now that's a whopping number of people coming into the country and most of those people are going towards the capital cities. Hence why those capital city price growth are just shooting up and rental growth as well shooting up. We are seeing still uh, internal or, or um, national migration happening. So people moving away from the capital cities uh, in search of potentially lifestyle or even great affordability. I think there's gonna be more of that happening throughout 2024 as well, as people sell up in some of those hotter markets, um, achieving great prices and coming to some regional areas where they can uh, have a comfortable lifestyle and, and buy something a lot more affordable as well. So I think that'll still be a key player next year. So what I have seen this year is a very mixed property market. In some instances, we are seeing property prices still achieving um, well above record prices. Um, but property prices haven't really fallen back on the Sunshine Coast, at least in my opinion. They may have slightly dropped a bit, but I believe that's still because the competitive nature of buyer activity that we experienced back in the peak of the market in 2021, 2022 is no longer there. And buyers now have a little bit of breathing space to make decisions. In saying that, um, there is still a noticeable amount of a noticeable shortage of properties for sale and buyers are aware of that as well. In some markets, a little bit different. In Sydney, they have reported an increased amount of new listings coming to the market, pushing total listings above uh, the average. Whereas in Brisbane and here on the Sunshine Coast, um, total listings are still below the averages. And I think that trend's gonna continue into 2024. How I see it playing out next year, and you can look at the reports by realestate.com.au and domain.com, both those property portals have predicted of what they think property prices will do next year. And across the board, it's generally suggested that nationally property prices are still gonna climb next year, perhaps at a slower rate. And that will really be influenced by a couple of things. The migrationary numbers that are coming into Australia and what the government and the RBA is gonna do around government incentives, tax incentives, and also that cash rate. And that'll influence the market very heavily next year, as well as how much new properties will come to the market. Now, I don't think there's gonna to be too many people coming to the market next year. I think we're still gonna see a shortage of supply on the market. And we do know that new dwelling approvals is very low as well. And that's probably gonna continue for the next couple of years. So what we're gonna see next year, um, they're reporting uh, growth of anything between four and 6% here on the Sunshine Coast. Um, Brisbane, they're saying anything from four to 8%. Um, and it could even spike higher than that. I think we're gonna see a very strong market at the start of the year because I think buyers have been holding off, waiting to see what that, um, the RBO was going to do. And they'll probably wait into the new year to see what the next cash rate's gonna do, which will be announced in their first meeting back in February. So that'll be a big influencer of how the market's gonna be shaped uh, for the first half of the year. If they don't raise that cash rate, I think we're gonna be in for a very busy start to the first half of the year. And I also think that in the second half of the year, we're gonna see some government incentives come in, some tax cuts, uh, as well as the RBA might start easing that cash rate back. And if that happens, this pent up buy demand on top of the new demand coming into Australia is going to push prices even higher and probably get to a tipping point with rental prices as well. So it's been a very interesting market this week, uh, this year. We've seen um, great sale transactions happen. We've seen a slowing pace um, in the time on the market. 
um, but at the same time, still a very strong market on all accounts. Guys, that is my market wrap for 2023. I do hope you have a great Christmas, guys, and reach out if you need anything. See you soon.